Good morning. Welcome to this service of morning prayer for August 9th. My name is Susan Drain. I am a lay reader in this Cathedral Church of All Saints in Halifax, Nova Scotia. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Be still and aware of the presence of God within and all around. Let us pray. Loving God, we thank you for this day and for this time when we can turn our thoughts from busyness and responsibility to your light and your peace. We thank you for all your gifts, for your creation around us, for the abundance of your provision for us, for friends and loved ones, and for both the blessings and the challenges that enrich our lives. We thank you for stories of perseverance and faithfulness. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Just before this passage, Peter and unnamed apostles, having been miraculously sprung from prison, are arrested again and brought before the high priest and the council. The high priest questioned them, saying, We gave you strict orders not to teach in this name, yet here you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching, and you are determined to bring this man, that is, Jesus, this man's blood on us. But Peter and the apostles answered, We must obey God rather than any human authority. The God of our ancestors raised up Jesus, whom you had killed by hanging him on a tree. God exalted him at his right hand as leader and savior, so that he might give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are witnesses to these things, and so is the Holy Spirit whom God has given to those who obey him. When they heard this, they were enraged and wanted to kill them. But a Pharisee in the council, called Gamaliel, a teacher of the law, respected by all the people, stood up and ordered the men to be put outside for a short time. Then he said to the council, Fellow Israelites, consider carefully what you propose to do to these men. I tell you, keep away from them and let them alone, because if this plan or this undertaking is of human origin, it will fail. But if it is of God, you will not be able to overthrow them. In that case, you may even be found fighting against God. They were convinced by him. And when they had called in the apostles, they had them flogged. Then they ordered them not to speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. As they left the council, they rejoiced that they were considered worthy to suffer dishonor for the sake of the name. And every day in the temple and at home, they did not cease to teach and proclaim Jesus as the Messiah. Here ends the lesson. Again, we have a story that invites us into its complexities. What would it be like to be a participant in what is a kind of standoff between the authorities and the apostles? The apostles are adamant that they must obey God rather than any human authority. And they are at pains to point out that the God who raised Jesus is the God of our ancestors, the ancestors of the Jewish authorities, as well as these rebels. Peter is not trying to establish common ground, however. Long experience of persecution has hardened his opposition into established lines of us and you. You had him killed, he says, and we, the followers of the way, are not only witnesses, but also privileged to be recipients of the Holy Spirit, given to those who obey God. That's us, not you. So we have a standoff. The Christians are not going to stop preaching the way. People are flocking to listen to them. The council and the chief priest see their authority slipping away. What can be done? 
Previous practice has been to arrest and kill ringleaders of dissent, after which their followers melted away. But already the council is afraid. When the guards retake the escaped prisoners, they do so without violence, lest the people stone them. I imagine the discussion in council goes back and forth, but we hear only the voice of Gamaliel, the canny lawyer, who offers his own version of Pascal's wager. That 17th century philosopher and mathematician proposed, you remember, that whatever one's belief, we should live as if we believed in God. At death, if it turns out that God doesn't exist, well, there has been no great loss. If God does exist, well, the bet pays off handsomely. Gamaliel proposes letting the apostles continue. If they are wrong in their belief that Jesus is the Messiah, then it will come to nothing. If the apostles are right, however, the council will have been fighting against God. Luke tells us that the council finds this argument very persuasive, but they don't really act on it. If I'd been there, would I have pointed it out? They don't leave it to God. Instead, they demand again that the teaching stop, and then they flog the teachers. Of course, it doesn't work. The work goes on, the apostles rejoicing in their suffering for the sake of Jesus, and it won't be long before Stephen is arrested and stoned to death under the watchful eye of the persecutor Saul. And that's another story of how God works through human beings in unexpected ways. May it be so. Before we turn to the tasks of the day, let us pray for ourselves and for one another. Give us strength for this day. Give us joy in this day. Comfort those who suffer and those who mourn. Send us wherever we are needed and sustain us on our way. Keep us steadfast on the path that Jesus taught and the apostles proclaimed. And we pray together in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs>